Scorpio, how are you? My name is Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. So I've gone ahead and I've laid out your spread this week with the Dream Keepers Tarot. All the decks that I use on the channel are linked in my link tree and my Amazon down below. This is an interesting energy that I'm looking at, Scorpio. I feel, <laughs> I feel very unsure of myself as I step into this reading. I'm sort of looking at this spread and I feel like I have a good grasp on it and I feel like I understand it, but I'm looking at it and going, is this right? Is this right here? Is this, is this worth discussing right now? I'm even looking at the deck that I use and I'm going, is this not the right deck? But it felt so strongly like this is the deck, like this is the message that wants to come forward for you today and this is a very shadowy deck and so there is something about you potentially like not wanting to sit in the shadow any longer but it's like the shadow's not quite done with you yet it's like it has something to say to you before you move over into a new energy so we're starting with this four of swords i feel very loud all of a sudden too i guess i'm sort of i'm just loud as a person um but i just feel like i am emitting like a louder tone than normal but we're starting with this again it's like this really self-conscious feeling like should i be here should i be doing this today is this the right deck and it's like there's this other part of my brain just, like, just shut up and read it more and <laughs> just read just read the spread right um maybe even like imposter syndrome maybe you're struggling with through some kind of imposter syndrome scorpio we're looking at this four of swords so here you are sort of just horizontal at the bottom you may be feeling very exhausted with it being swords it could just be mentally you're just kind of spread a little bit thin it feels like this energy of constant analysis and calculation to the point of almost walking on eggshells what sticks out to me in this card is there's this crow or this raven right over here and i don't know how well you'll be able to see it in my camera but he's actually holding something that looks like a necklace or a bracelet maybe part of like a crown or something it's very circular and it almost feels scorpio like your armor was taken from you or like a source of your power was taken from you and without it it's sort of like you are much more susceptible to kryptonite. It's like, this is my thing. Um, this is, this is you know, when I feel the most confident. Um, this is my purpose. Like, it's that sort of thing. When I put on this ideology, or when I put on this necklace, or when I just wear this thing, then I feel strong and capable and energized. Like, I can go and do whatever I want. I could kiss the moon if I, if I felt so inclined. But without it, it's like you just become drained. It's almost like Iron Man. Iron Man came up in another reading. I think it was Virgo's reading, actually. So I don't know, just the collective story that I'm reading, if we're kind of working through this like superhero archetype right now. But again, it's like without it, you feel very drained. It's like when Iron Man takes the thing out of the center of his chest and a suit turns off. It feels very much like that. Now, the Hierophant is coming up next. And this energy, when I saw it, I immediately heard bodyguard. Bodyguard, bodyguard. It's a word that keeps resonating throughout your whole reading. And this Hierophant, for me, feels like an aspect of the shadow. What I do like is it's coming forward in the form of this triple goddess, which I think is this really beautiful note on how the shadow has a lot of layers to it the shadow goes through phases as well just like your conscious mind and your higher self the shadow is not one noted and um, this higher fun is coming forward see the staff in her hand it's very gandalf it's very like no scorpio you shall not pass like we want to talk about this thing with you like we want you to figure this out and it's so funny that i'm saying it's your shadow right but it's coming forward as like we, the group, the the collection of energies that make up your internal moon want to have this discussion with you before you move over to the next phase. And it's followed up by this nine of swords. And so there is this, no, I don't want to talk about the shadow anymore. No, I'm sick of feeling tired. I don't want to feel mentally stretched. I just want to get out into the light. I just want to go and do what I want to do, right? And there's all of these words written on your back. And so there might also be this, but I have a mission. I can't be here in the dark. I have to go out there. I have a contract with the universe. 
I made a promise to myself. Like, it is this sort of contractual, obligatory type of energy, and it feels really uncomfortable. Libra had a bit of this yesterday, too, where they were sort of being plucked out um, by the universal claw machine and sort of put over on the side for a moment in time. Feels like you've been in here much longer than they have. Libra's felt very temporary, and you feel like you've been in this for a prolonged state. But there is a sense of frustration here because of what you're supposed to be doing or what you signed up to do and feeling like you cannot absorb the energy that's necessary. You can't go out and do it without like your precious, right? It's this very like Gollum, like my precious um, sort of thing. Strength is coming up next. And so when I'm looking at this strength card, it feels like quicksand. It feels like quicksand, like the more that you struggle and try and get out of the shadow energy or the more that you try and like pull yourself up by the bootstraps and kind of reclaim your your bracelet. Um, it's like the further you sink, the tighter the snake gets around you and it becomes even more difficult to move to make progress. You may feel even more exhausted because it's like you're swimming against the tide. Even your confidence might suffer even more and more from it. And when I pulled these cards, I had a little bit of a chuckle to myself because I went, they look so little because I've been using these really big Oracle decks mixed together. And so they are like twice the size of these cards and they're normally really brightly colored where in this deck, the colors are much more muted. The cards are small, like they're regular sized, right? So it is funny, kind of the contrast there because it's like I have something bigger, I have something vibrant, something cool, something big that I'm trying to do. I don't want to look at like this little, this little aspect that you want me to look at. I don't want to have to sit here and study this one aspect of my shadow. It's so dark. It's so muted. It's not interesting to me. It feels like I'm not supposed to be in this. It's like when I'm looking at your spread and going, I don't know if I'm supposed to be using this deck today, but I am. There is something about you really taking the time right now to kind of explore the details of your own darkness and your own shadow and like your own blockages and your own limitations on particularly like why you think you need this armor like why you think you need sort of this protective amulet or like why you need this costume in order to complete the look to complete the thing now the ten of pentacles is coming up next and this is a fantastic card if you look here, there's actually one day I'll get like a real camera, be a real boy. Um, you can see this woman, she's climbing out of this dress. And so part of the message from the bodyguard of your shadow is saying, Scorpio, just do me a favor. Just climb out of this whole thing you have going on right here. Just humor me. Climb out of this superhero thing, climb out of this dress, climb out of this character that you are trying to be in the world for like just a moment, just a moment. If you notice the sky too, it looks like it's blocked out by all of these clouds. And so I almost feel like you may be having a difficult time perceiving what may be coming for you in the future or perceiving your guidance. You're having a hard time hearing your spirit team, like all of that type of stuff. Feels very radio silence. And it feels like it's because you're supposed to be listening to yourself, the quiet voice within, the wisdom that comes from your own shadow. And it's more important for you to hear that than it is for you to pull from some external celestial guidance. I know that's frustrating, but it feels like it's more, and that's the thing, it's more important for you to listen to yourself. And maybe this is something that has transpired in your physical life where you always listen to other people. You're always listening to society. You're always trying to figure out what's coming next. And like so rarely is there an opportunity for you to hear or think or consult with what you really want, regardless of what's going on around you, right? And so that feels like it's being reflected in your spiritual process as well. So you're being encouraged to kind of step out of this armor don't try and pick it back up. Step out of this character or what you think you are contractually obligated to be doing. Just cut it out for a moment. Now, these next three cards were really fun for me to read, actually, because we have Justice. We have this Ten of Wands. Look at the pictures, not the suits. And then we have this Two of Wands. So when I'm looking at these cards, it felt very much like a fitting room. Like this Justice is kind of like a mannequin. If you've ever seen 
a designer or a, se a seamstress put together an outfit. They take these mannequins and they drape this fabric really loosely over it, trying to figure out what the dimensions are. Like, where do they want to stitch? Where do they want to stitch? Where do they want to pull things in, let things out? And she has all of these different things in her hand. She has a book. There's a keyhole right here. There is a candle. There is a knife, right? It's like all of these tools. You actually see a little guy at the bottom and it reminds me of someone trying to put little pins in the dress right so they can get the length sort of just right there's this idea here scorpio like what if what if there was a better dress for you like what if there was something that was more beneficial than this piece of armor or this magical necklace or this character like let's just play around with the concept we're not saying yes or no or do or don't it's like let's just kind of be a little bit more free thinking here let's pull out the mannequins with this ten of wands we see you kind of with this skeleton looking in the mirror, right? Kind of like, I don't know, would I look good as a blonde? Or, you know, maybe like if I, if I, you know, rose the length up a little bit, or how does this color sort of look against my skin, right? It's just kind of playing around with the concept that maybe what you've been doing or what you've been wearing or who you've been trying to be, like it's not the be all and end all that is available for you. It's this idea of options. Like you have a lot more options in your expression or what you could be doing then you may be realizing right and then we have this two of wands which is sort of like this try on in this fitting room it's very like say yes to the dress <laughs> it's like well let's try this on right and you see the the reflection in the mirror is she's covered in this white dress like you are right here the thing that feels a little bit difficult about this if you notice there's all of these roots connected here and so it's the idea of even kind of playing around with this concept or trying it on. It feels uncomfortable because you're not just taking off a costume or taking off some armor or this thing that you feel like you need, even if it's an ideology, right? Um, it's taking like a part of you out of it. And that seems to be part of the message here is that the work that you do, the way that you present yourself, the way you move through the world, is supposed to be reflective of who you actually are. The work that you do, the world that you live in, that isn't supposed to become who you are. Who you are is supposed to overtake the work that you do and the world that you live in, right? It's, it's not outside in, it's inside out. I hope that makes sense. So I see you in this fitting room kind of trying this on just for shits and giggles, right? Like, all right, well, maybe, like, maybe I would look good in this funny hat. Like, I don't know. Like, okay. It's just the process of trying to detach you from thinking that that's the only way that things are or the only way things have to be or the only way you have to go about doing something. Now, the Six of Swords and the Chariot card come up next. So there's this energy of movement. I don't feel like you've totally said yes to a dress but maybe you have found one that just makes you feel a little bit more bold or vibrant than you've been feeling here in this four of swords kind of sunken in the shadow right again it's that big bright oracle cards versus like these tiny muted tarot cards it's like it's not quite there but it's like kind of on the right track to the energy that you want to be feeling so it feels like you sort of start moving in that direction and then you enter this chariot card but two things I notice is one, you're carrying two masks. And so again, you're kind of caught between these archetypes of like, well, I could, I could be like this, or I could be like that. And maybe that would work a little bit better. Again, it's a lot of this analysis. It's a lot of this calculation. It's very mental. Chariot, this is a card of cancer. There's not a lot of feeling in it. It's like, how do I look in this as opposed to how do I feel in this? Does that make sense? And if you notice, these two horses, they're actually charging towards each other as opposed to both of them facing in the same direction, which is counterintuitive to the entire concept of the chariot card, which is about getting your mind, your spirit, your actions all in the same direction. This also denotes like um, a need to integrate duality, like your light and your dark. Um, all of the different archetypes that can make up a person or an expression or an oversoul, right? So the Seven of Swords follows that. And there's kind of this carnival energy when I, that when I pull this card. I think what you're saying is 
well, I can't make a choice yet between whether I want to be in this outfit or whether I want to do this thing. Like I kind of have to, I know they're in conflict. I know I'm kind of having a bit of an identity crisis right now, but I sort of need to take it for a spin, right? It's like, I look at these swords and I feel like you're about to juggle it or you're going to start to swallow these swords. It's like, I kind of need to try this truth on, or I kind of have to see how all of this kind of plays out in my life. I have to put these shoes on and take it for a walk and kind of finally see like how it feels. I think you're making <coughs> the distinction between how something looks or how you think it's going to be and how it actually feels to wear it throughout your life as who you are. So you're going, no, no, like, well, let me just try on these different characters or like pull out some more dresses. Let me try on these different truths. Is this my truth? Maybe this is my truth instead. How do I feel about that? No, nah, maybe I feel this way instead. It's never really feeling sure of yourself, right? And so this idea of imposter syndrome, it doesn't just play out in terms of your work and showing up in the world or relationships. It's the idea of like, I don't know who I am. Who am I? Like, who is... Scorpio, can the, can the real Scorpio please stand up? So I see you kind of going through this process. You realize that it has to feel right as opposed to just think right. But as soon as you begin the process, you immediately pop back up into your headspace, which is not where you can hear the quiet voice from your heart. So this five of wands comes up next. And it's kind of funny, this lady, do you know she has this little baton? I feel like she's like batting you in the head. It's like your shadow, like Scorpio, stop it and if you look at the bottom one of these masks is actually on the ground and so there is this idea of Scorpio stop putting on characters like you don't have to put on these masks because what you may not realize is so much of the pursuit of this is to make you appear in the eyes of others the way you want to appear to yourself but you don't even see yourself like that and that is perceivable to other people. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense for you. There is something about like, you don't need to play a character. You don't need a magic bracelet. You don't need this armor in order to go out into the world. This is not about figuring out which truth is your truth. It's about actually identifying what your truth is, like who you actually are. And so it's kind of throwing you a bit for the loop and the hang woman comes up next. And so it is sort of this, uh, your mind, your world being kind of turned upside down, sort of being suspended in time for a moment and kind of going like, wait, like, why do I do this? It's the idea of like, I want to be successful. And so this is what successful people do. Here's 10 tips for successful adults, right? It's like, I want to be kind. And this is what kind people do, or I want to be really intuitive so this is what intuitive people do it's like kind of always following like these external blueprints or feeling as if there's a certain way to get something done and if you want to get it done you have to embody and engross yourself in that way and be that type of person and so you kind of just it's like a carousel you kind of just circle through all of these different masks or archetypes or ways of doing things none of which are truly of your own design None of which are with the consultation of what actually feels right and comfortable for you. So while you're kind of hanging upside down, really trying to consider this, the Knight of Pentacles appears. And this feels like he is dropping like uh, like some hot knowledge. Like he's dropping a download, dropping a, a realization sort of into your vending machine. And it has to do with this Five of Pentacles. With his addition, it's five, but without it, it's four. It's the ways in which you've kind of held on to doing things in a certain type of way. I'm wondering if like some of you grew up like very competitive or like you were put on stage, right? Uh, like competing for like trophies or athletics or dance or cheerleading or music or debate team. Like there is something about that like I have to embody this I have to get on the stage I have to sort of perform it and then you know I will be rewarded for it and that reinforces my idea that when I step into this arena then this is who I am but meanwhile like completely discounting like all of the blood sweat and tears and dress rehearsals and bloody fingers on your guitar strings like all of the stuff that like that's actually who you are that when you get on the stage or when you step up as the boss or when you that's actually the least interesting thing about you that's not actually where you are successful you're successful in the trenches 
that's when your personality comes out like that's who you actually are like that's your grit that's your spirit that's your shadow that's who you not who you are when you get on the stage that is like the least interesting thing about the entire process right and so in this five of pentacles you see all of these ribbons it almost looks like she's tying a ribbon around her neck it's like there's ribbons here again it's like it's all of this cinching it's going back to this dressing room energy that like maybe there's some part of you scorpio that like doesn't want to be poked and prodded that like doesn't want to be measured into these perfect quantities for other people right um that maybe there is actually a part of you that doesn't want to do this song and dance anymore and maybe you haven't been recognizing it because you thought that this song and dance was what's the right word i want to use a non-negotiable part of getting to the thing that you want right so the two of swords is coming up next with the seven of wands to follow. And so I see this shadow, you know, this card, I see this aspect of your shadow kind of coming back out and saying, there's a message here about your vulnerability. One of the questions that your shadow has is Scorpio, are you done with the song and dance? And there's also another, and there's kind of this vulnerability here, right? And you're like, I don't know, like, so yeah, you have this bird head. You're like, I don't know. I don't, maybe I don't know who I am and maybe I don't know what I like. And, you know, maybe it's kind of like lost in the sauce. Like maybe I don't know what I have to do or who I have to be in order to obtain the thing I want or feel the way I want, right? It's like, I don't, it feels very vulnerable. And if you notice in this card, she's blindfolded and see there's this naked mannequin again, right? She's blindfolded. And the message that wants to come through here is Scorpio. It's like, <laughs> it's a lot here. The reason why you feel so vulnerable is because when you go out there, you can't actually see yourself in any of the things that you're doing. You're blindfolded. That's why it feels vulnerable. And the best way to describe this energy is to give you a personal story about myself. Um... From the time that I started my channel, people have always praised me on my vulnerability, how I've shared a lot about myself and my journey and things that go on with me sort of behind the scenes. And there is an aspect of me that is deeply appreciative of that. But there's also an aspect of me that kind of feels like it's funny because in those moments when I come on here in front of however many people seem to be watching me that day and I'm loud and I'm opinionated and I'm talking about what I believe in and I'm really passionate about it and I'm going off on these stories and I'm sharing these things. And, and there is no moment where I feel vulnerable when I'm doing that. People see it as vulnerability, but for me, it's not vulnerability because when I look back at that video, I see myself, I hear myself, I look like me, I sound like me. So when I see it, it doesn't feel like vulnerability. It just feels like who I really am. I, I don't feel vulnerable I feel strong I feel like I am fully present in who I am as a person I feel like I've filled up my skin that day does that make sense and so it's reflected here for you it's like it only feels scary or it only feels vulnerable because it's like it's not really you it's the character it's the mask or it's the thing you think you're supposed to be doing or how you're supposed to be saying it and in that aspect like you are not the artist of your own life like you are purely just the gallery for other people does that make sense i hope that makes sense i hope i'm articulating that properly this death card comes up next and so this feels very much like a marriage right like say yes to the dress and she's kind of holding on to the skeleton and there's a message here about how the fact it's this realization it's part of what's being dropped in how you've been committed or like married to like your own ambiguity in a way like your own uncertainty and how that in and of itself is like kind of being married to your own death or like your own disempowerment because every time you go through a death process and then you go through this rebirth you're not taking your first new breath it's like you're taking the breath of like another character sometimes well maybe if it were i do it like this or maybe if i do it like that like 
But like, what if Scorpio, like you just did it the way you wanted to do it. And if you were too loud or if you were too opinionated or the way you got it done is different than how it's supposed to get done. Like, what if that's okay? Not everyone's going to, you know, honor your uniqueness and not everyone's going to hear every, you know, loud opinion that you have to say. But like, that's their problem because they don't have to listen. But like, you have to listen to you. When you look at your life, when you look back on the work that you're doing, the way you show up in relationships, it's like, don't you want to see yourself? Because even if it doesn't work for other people, or even if other people don't like it, it's like, that's, that's life for you. That's, that's self-respect. You're honoring who you are, right? And so it's sort of these realizations kind of coming to you. And I think, again, it goes back to this nine of swords and how you've been married to your own ambiguity that in maybe some ways, like you've been way too much like a shapeshifter or too much like a chameleon. Um, and maybe you found one character or one way of doing things that felt like armor. And it felt like if I put this on or if I get into this mode or this energy, then I feel big and confident enough to like accomplish the things that I want. Even though there's like an aspect of you that's still really hiding in the shadow that is just as good or just as helpful or beneficial as the places or the pieces of you that you put into the light again it's all of the work that you did behind the scenes that makes what you do on the stage impressive that's that is you laying it all on the field not when you step in front of the microphone and then we're ending your reading with this nine of pentacles and this king of swords and so it's like all of a sudden these realizations these dots just connect for you and it's like boom, you're awake. It's kind of like waking up from a bad dream and you're back in your body, right? It's like you filled up your skin. You have the outfit. You're like, you know what? I don't like that funny little hat because it's ridiculous. And what am I going to the Kentucky Derby? No. Now you have your exact measurements. You're not in the darkness anymore. It's like you're in the, you're in the light, the real light of day of you. And I also like this King of Swords because it feels like the other phase of your shadow because this is what when you think of your shadow you think it is like this but again it's not your shadow actually looks like this king of swords and he feels a little bit like a conductor kind of watching you move around very awake awakened from this bad dream very in your skin it's like holy shit i'm alive like i'm here like i'm, I'm back i'm back here i'm back home present i am an occupant of my own being again and this king of swords this new aspect of your shadow is like all right, all right, all right. Like, I'm gonna take some notes. Like, how does that feel? Like, I like the rhythm. I see what's going on here. And a one and a two, right? Like, it's this really cool thing. And then towards the end right here, it's like the energy lightens up. You're like, oh, I get it. Why do I torture myself? Like, I get it now. I get it now. It's about me. It's about me. Okay. Okay. So it's like you shifted in this new phase and your shadow shifts into this new phase with you. And you don't need the big, bright, fancy cards because, like, you are the big, bright, fancy thing. It's nice. It ends on, like, this really nice note. And which is why, in the beginning, your shadow was, like, putting her foot down going, I know you want to do a different kind of message. I know you want the other cards. I know this doesn't feel right. And it's because it's not right. Because this is not the energy that you really want to be in. But we have to look at it because of that to figure out what is right for us. And I think that we did. So I think that's beautiful. I am going to go do an extended reading, Scorpio. So if you're interested in your extended reading or if you're interested in your monthly reading for August, those links will be down below for you. I always encourage you guys to check out Patreon. We have all of the extendeds, all the monthlies, and our mystery school um, and one-on-one -on -one readings. Anything you'll need from me will be linked down below. I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this and this was helpful for you. I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Goodbye.